Alright all, like the title suggests, in today's video I've got a $900 all AMD gaming build for you. This is the middle port of 2020, and this is about what you can expect for a $900 build. If you've seen any of my other build videos on the channel here, you notice that most of my builds are based around performance, not really for the looks or the, you know, the cosmetics, which I may be changing that up, we'll see how that goes. Let's flip you over here and show you the ports that I'm going to be putting in this $900 build today. Alright all, here we are on new egg. For the main power of the system, we're going to go with the AMD Ryzen 5 3600, the non-next SKU. You can get this SKU right now for about $200 on new egg. I actually paid a little bit less for mine. I paid $175 for mine. But that is a 6 core 12, 12 thread processor and it does do up uh, it does do 3.6 gigahertz and it boosts up to 4.2 gigahertz which is going to be fine for most of your gaming needs and your streaming needs if you want to stream this would also make a good streaming computer as well and for the motherboard we have the Asus Prime B550MA Wi-Fi motherboard this is the newest generation of motherboards that AMD's got out um, right now on New Egg you can actually buy it for $149.99 which is the same price that I paid for it when I got mine about a month ago. Next for the RAM, we have G Skills Rip Jaws 5 Series 16, 2 8 by get 2 8 gig sticks. Run at 3600 mega uh, 3600 megahertz here. And you can get it today for about $62. I paid about $65 for this when I bought mine, so the price actually came down a little bit on that. But that six that sixteen that sixteen gigs of RAM will be plenty for your needs. And everybody knows Ryzen likes a little bit faster memory, so I went with the 3600 megahertz speeds. For the storage in this system, I know this is a little minimum for, this, for the storage on it, but we got the Silicon Power Ace A55. It does have pretty good reviews on it. 512 gigs is a little lackluster, or, you know, a lot of people need more storage than that. 512 gigs will be fine for your operating system and some of your main, more played games. You know, the games that you're playing right now. You may not be able to hold a whole lot of games on it, but still, yet it'll get you up and running. And you can always add another hard drive to it if you got one laying around or if you got a little bit of extra money. That'd be a, that would be my recommendation for this build is to get a little bit better storage, a little bit more storage. You can get it today for $47 here on Newegg. I actually paid a little bit more than that. I paid $52 for mine when I bought mine. And here for the case, we have the... Fractal Design Mastified C Mini Black Micro ATX Case. You can get it today on New Egg for $93.99, which is up a little bit from what I paid for mine. I paid $89.99 $89 for mine, so it's up by 4 or $5 from the time that I, that I purchased mine. But that's going to be what's housing everything. And for the power supply, which is no longer available, the power supply, I paid $86.92 for the power supply in this system, which that's awful expensive for 500 watt. But we have the EVGA 500BR100. It is 80 plus bronze certified. And it does come with all black cables. And for the graphics card, that's what everybody's been waiting for, right? That's why I waited to the end. We have the Gigabyte Radeon RX 5600 XT Windforce OC 6 gig graphics card. Right now on New Egg, it's going for $269.99. That's actually down from when I bought mine. I bought mine at two. When I bought mine, I paid two hundred eighty dollars for this graphics card. So you're looking at the price when I bought my components. That was about about a month ago or so when I bought my components. I paid eight hundred ninety eight dollars and thirty nine cents to eight hundred twenty two dollars and ninety four cents. But that ain't including the power supply because the power supply is not in stock right now and is not available. Some of the tools that you're going to need to uh, be building a computer with. Number one thing you're going to need is a number two Phillips. You can get any kind that you want, as long as it's a number two Phillips there at the tip of it. That's going to be your main tool that you're going to need. And then you're going to need a pair of scissors or a utility knife or something to be opening your boxes with and whatnot. I also have a six inch extension bit that's also a number two Phillips. Um, that just makes it a lot easier to get down around the air coolers and whatnot that you're going to install and your motherboard, you know, to be able to put the screws in your motherboard. It helps to have this when you go down around your RAM sticks to get to your motherboard standoffs to screw your motherboard in. And also for the finishing touches, I also have a pair of wild cutters here or side cuts, you know, depending on where you're from, they got different names. 
But this is just to cut off the ends of the zip ties whenever you do your cable management, just to make it look a little bit nicer. So that's pretty well the rundown of the tools. That's about basic tools that you're going to need throughout the build. There is a tool that you're going to need to put your standoffs into the case, especially into this case, depending on your case. This one only has one standoff installed. I had to install the rest of the standoffs, which may I have a dedicated tool for this. I got a little socket that fits it that tightens them down. Most cases nowadays, though, when they include the standoffs for you to put in, they also include a little tool that's in it, which I use in this video to install the standoffs with. Most cases include this little tool, but if not, you know, you can find a socket, maybe a wrench that'll fit in that fit to fit them standoffs. Or maybe just a pair of pliers. You know, when you, whenever you're installing your standoffs, you don't need them real tight because you ain't sealing it against water or air or nothing. You just need to make sure that they're in there tight enough to where whenever you back your screws out, if you go to change your motherboard, that they ain't going to come back up out. So they don't have to be extremely tight. So you may need a pair of pliers or something extra with that if your case manufacturer don't include that with the with the case and the standoffs. Let me run. The, let me show you how to get this thing built. I'm going to do a step-by-step -step video here for you today. So let's jump into the video and I'll show you how to get this computer built. Alright guys, as, if you've seen any other build videos, you know I like to start out with prepping the motherboard for installation. Let's go ahead and get this bad boy out of the box here. Alright guys, here's the motherboard out of the box. <clears throat> We're going to put it on top of the motherboard box just to have a nice, safe, clean work area for us. I'm going to open up the CPU here. Alright guys, now we're going to install the CPU. Right here's your AM4 socket. I'm going to take and get the CPU out of the clamshell package in here. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this very well on the on video or not here. Okay, right down here in the corner of the CPU, you need a little gold triangle. A little triangle up here on your socket on the motherboard. You lift up the lever, pull it back, you line up them two triangles. You just put it down in there nice and gently. Give it a little wiggle, make sure it's in there good. You lower the lever down, click it back down. CPU's installed. All right, guys, while I got you zoomed in here like this, we're going to go ahead and install the air cooler, which we're going to use the stock. So we need to remove these here, two, uh, two little plastic brackets here. Just need to remove the two screws that hold each one of them down. Set them over to the side. Do the same over here. Okay, now with them, with them removed, there is a metal back plate behind the motherboard. You need to make sure the it's up tight with these little metal posts that's sticking up through for your heat sink. You can pretty well install this in any orientation that you want. I usually take the AMD and I like to put it towards the heat sink or the back of, back of the motherboard. That way you don't have to worry about interfering with your AM sticks. And it's pretty simple. And the other thing to keep in mind, the other thing to keep in mind is where your CPU fan header comes off your CPU header, off your heat sink. You need to make sure it's close to where your CPU fan hooks into your motherboard. That way you don't have to run it all the way around it or whatever. Just makes it a little bit, you can make it a little bit easier on you. Set your heat sink down on there. In the right position, make sure your post is lined up. And you want to do this kind of in a cross pattern. Just give them a couple turns to get them started into the post. Through that back plate that's on the back of the motherboard. There we go. That's the second one. Come over here and do the third one. And like I said, you just want to get them started with a few turns on each one. You don't want to tighten them all the way down. You don't want uneven pressure on it. There we go. Now since they're all started, just go back and forth across them. Just a few turns on each one until, until they bottom out. You know, you want to try to keep the pressure as even as possible on them. And these screws will bottom out where, they, where they're as tight as they're supposed to be. Just like so. Alright, then after that you find your PMW CPU fan header. Which on this motherboard is right here, it says CPU fan. 
you have a four pin PMW header. It is notched, so it only goes one way. Line up the notches on them, you slide them down over. And that is the CPU and cooler installed. And right here's your RAM slots. To run dual channel, you want to use every other slot. You may want to look in your motherboard manual to figure out which slots they recommend to populate. But most generally, it's going to be, you start out with the one furthest away from the CPU. Then you skip one, and it's the next one. And you got this little key right here in your RAM slot. And there's a notch in the RAM the ramp slot here and your dim's got a uh, notch in it you need to line them up make sure you open up the clips either on one side or both sides depending on your motherboard and take push them down in get them lined up one thumb on each edge slide down and put the other side down into here and clip it down in okay then you do the next dim the same way you line up your notch and your dim with the notch that's in the motherboard and the slot set them down in there get them started one side then the other side that pretty well wraps it up for the motherboard for everything you need to add to it right now until you get it into the case. Now with the motherboard prepped, we will move on to uh, prepping the case. Alright guys, and to prep the case, I'm going to go ahead and take the dust filters off of it. That way they don't get in my way and I don't lose them. Alright, you're going to take off your... If you're using the Messified C Mini, like I'm using here today, you take off the tempered glass side panel. Set that to the side. You want to make sure that don't get broke no place. Okay, I'm going to flip it over here. Take off the back panel. Take off, your, loosen up your two thumb screws. In this case, they're captive. Loosen up the two thumb screws. Pull it back about an inch and lift it up. About half inch to an inch. All right, guys. Well, I got this outside the case here. To make it easier and for you can actually see what I'm doing. I'm going to go ahead and uh, hook up, show you how to hook up the cables. That's going to be your front panel connectors your USB 3 and all that. I'm going to show you how to hook all this up outside the case because it's hard to get you a view once it's in the case. Okay, on this particular motherboard, it's right here beside your SATA connectors. That's where you're going to hook up your hard drive activity light. You're going to hook up your power switch and your reset switch and all that. On this motherboard, it's actually put on the motherboard itself, but still sometimes hard to read. So it's nice to refer to your manual to see how, see how these things are supposed to plug in or where to plug them in at. And on this case, it looks like the Hard drive LED is one block. The power of the reset switch is one block. The power LED is separated. The reset switch is one block. You have your hard drive LED, which is one block. And you have your power switch, which is one block. And right down here in fine print, I don't know if you can see that on camera or not, but it'll tell you uh, the on the very bottom pins, it's HDD, positive goes to the left, or I guess it'd be up to you guys. And negative would be to the right. Your positive and negative is always the same on each of them, as long as you can distinguish which one is which on one of them. Then right above your hard drive activity light, you have your power switch, uh, your power LED. Right beside that's your reset switch, and right below that one is your power switch. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these plugged in here. These are fairly easy once you figure out which one's negative and which one's positive. On the LED, on the LED lights, it does matter which one's negative and positive. Your switch, it really don't matter which one's negative or positive. But just to make it all look the same, I like to plug them in the same way as well. Power LED on top, and you need to make sure that you plug the positive into the one that's on the top of the screen here, or towards the back of the motherboard, I guess I should say. Then your negative goes right beside that. Just like so. And then, below that, you got your H8, uh, HDD LED. It plugs in the same way. You gotta make sure you have that positive right on that one. That way your LEDs work on the front of the case. Then right beside that, on top, is your reset switch. Uh, like I said, the negative and the positive, the negative and the positive really don't matter on your switches. But I like to make them all look uniform, so I do worry about it myself. 
and it goes right above the top two there. Then your power switch will go down here in the bottom. Okay, there's your front panel connectors hooked up. And I don't know if many people actually use this or not, but we have it. We have front audio. It is a 20 pin connector here. I'm hoping you guys can see that. But you got one pin that's blocked off. All right, here's the header for it. And it's also got a pin missing. You just match them up here and slide it down on. Just like so. All right, then you got your USB 3, which is also a 20 pin. It is keyed up here on top, which on this motherboard. All right, here's your connector. It's got a little cutout in the in the connector for it to where it slides down in. Then you take it and slide it down in. And there you go. That's your front panel connector hooked up. Okay, and also, if you're using a SATA hard drive like I am, you're going to need to install a SATA cable. Of course, you do this once it's inside your system. It's just easier for me to show you out here. And here's my SATA ports on my motherboard. Yours may vary. You have to check your manual. But they are keyed. They do have an L shape in them. They only go one way. They do have an L shape in the connectors. They can only plug in one way. You have to make sure you have that L shape in the right direction. And you just slide them down into the metal, to the little metal clip clips. And it's going to be in there. It ain't going to come out. Okay, guys, now to install your motherboard into your case, you need to get the IO shield, which it comes with your motherboard. Get it out with a little package in there. And right back here in the back underneath the fan, there's a cutout. And when you install these, most generally, in most case setups, your audio ports is the round ports right here. Usually you need to make sure they're facing the bottom of the computer case. Just kind of slide it down in. And you push the push it down in. This is friction fit. There's no screws or nothing that holds this in. Unless you got a nice nicer motherboard than what I've got. Some of them actually have this shield built onto them. So in that case, you can skip this step. If you see my other videos, I like to flip mine over just to make sure it's seated up in there all the way like it should be. Just like so. And now we're going to be installing the motherboard. All right. And your case may vary from mine, but this case that I'm using, you got one standoff here in the middle for your motherboard supports. But you look at the motherboard, Look at the motherboard here, and you can see how many standoffs you need. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I need eight standoffs, but I've only got one in my case, which means I'm going to have to add seven more standoffs. And like I said, my case has got one already there in the middle. They'll set it in place. You need to dry fit it down in here, slide it, put it at an angle, slide it down in there until it catches on that middle post. And then you can kind of determine where the other post is going to have to go. Every place there's one of these holes with the little silver thing around them, which is your grounding straps, you need to put a post. That way you can screw down into it. And your case should have came with a baggie. Some cases, it depends on your case manufacturer. This one here has got the standoffs and the tool to install them by themselves. And the screws come in a different baggie. Sometimes they're in the same baggie. Sometimes all the screws and everything's just in one bag. It depends on the case manufacturer. So with that one middle one, and my motherboard takes eight standoffs, I've got to put seven of these standoffs in. So that means I'm going to have one extra one left over. All right, you pull your motherboard back up out. And you start putting your standoffs in. All right, guys, i got them all started down in there. I'm going to put my motherboard back down in here. Just to make sure they're where they need to be. Alright, now if you look down through the holes, you should be able to see a post underneath each one of the holes. Which happens, there's got the nub in it. 
The rest of them's got a post underneath of them. You, this is very important because if you have a post back there that there ain't a hole to screw down to, it could short out your motherboard and damage your motherboard. Now, since I know everything is right on it, I'm going to pull the motherboard back out. I'm going to use this little tool that they gave me that fits on top of the standoffs. And it just turns it into a number two Phillips head. That way I can use my screwdriver to get them snug down in there pretty good. Alright guys, I got them all snug down in there. These don't need to be extremely tight. You just need to make sure they're tight enough to when you go to unscrew your motherboard for some reason they don't back off. I'm going to dry fit this one more time in here. I'm going to put it down in here. Get it into the I.O. shield. Get that middle post lined up right. And make sure that all my holes has got a standoff behind them. <clears throat> and in this case, the screws for your motherboard and your SSDs actually come in their own little package. Sometimes you'll have to figure out which ones they are, uh, how you do that. Just take a standoff and try to dry fit it in there and make sure it's the right size for the standoff. But I need one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So I'm going to pull me out seven screws out of this baggie. Alright guys, I've got seven screws here for the seven holes that I have in my motherboard. The motherboard actually has eight, but this is the little nub that sticks up so the screw don't actually go into it. And it really don't matter which way you, which pattern you use to put these screws in. Um, the way I normally do it, I get, I get them all started just by a couple of turns. That way if you have to wiggle the board around or whatever to get the other ones lined up, you can still do so. Alright guys, now since i got them all started, I'm just going to go back and tighten them down all the way and these don't have to be extremely tight you don't want to break the motherboard you don't want to break the tracers or nothing just want to make sure they're snug all you're trying to do is hold the motherboard in place you ain't trying to kill it you ain't trying to seal it or nothing like that you know just a just a nice little tweak nice little uh a snugging you know you don't really want these real real tight like i said you know you ain't trying to seal it against water or air or anything you just need them snug down to where it's going to hold the motherboard in just like so. All right, it's all in there nice and snug. Now, that is the installation of the motherboard. As you can see, I got a screw in all the holes. The CPU and the heat sinks are under, my RAMs are under. Um, I guess my next thing would be either the SSD or the power supply. All righty, guys. Now, since we got the front cables plugged in and everything like that, got the motherboard installed that was already pre-prepped with the CPU, CPU cooler and the RAM. I went ahead and uh, connected the cabling up that I needed. I noticed one thing though. Alright guys, as I was hooking up the cables, I realized I never hooked up the back fan. You have a chassis fan header right here. That's a four pin PMW fan. The fan that's included in this case is only a three pin header. But that's alright. This ain't RGB or ARGB, so you can plug that three pin header into a four pin header and it'll be alright. Just don't have quite as much control over the speed of the fan. But it'll work, it'll work like it's supposed to. And they're both keyed. You got a little notch right here on both, on the edge of this. You got a little plastic piece sticking up on the three pin, the four pin header. Just line them up and slide it on there. Just like so. Alright all, to install your power supply, you have to take this power supply bracket off the back of it. Which, this is a little tight from the factory. After you use a screwdriver here. Get it loosened up a little bit. Pull this bracket off and the important part is when you're installing a when you're installing a PSU or the power supply if you ain't gonna leave it set on carpet which this has got a good bit of space down here for air to go underneath up because of the feet this fan sucks air in you want to make sure that it's facing down um, for number one it draws fresh air into the case or up into the power supply instead of the hot air out of the case. And number two, if you need to get in there, you don't have a PSU shroud like this one does. You may drop a screw or something down in there and short it out. So you want to try to avoid that. So now since we've got the bracket off and we know which orientation we want to put the power supply, which is with the fan down, we need to take your bracket and line it up with the four holes and put your four screws in it. Um, you can either use the screws that came with the power supply, or your case also usually has uh, screws that's supplied to do this with. 
You can use either set. They should be pretty well the same screw. Either way you want to do. And again, like everything else that you see me do, you know, I get them started just a little bit, just enough to hold it. I get all four of them started. That way if I need to move the bracket or I need to move the power supply, I can do so and it ain't going to be that much of a hassle to me. And you also need to make sure that the screws is actually going in a screw hole and not one of these vent holes. If it goes in the vent hole, it ain't going to hold very securely, so you want to make sure you're getting it in the right hole. And now since that's the last one, I can go ahead and tighten that down. You don't need to tighten these down real tight, just snug. You know, I mean, you ain't sealing it against water or air or anything like that. You just need them... Name snug, just enough to hold them in there. Okay, now with that being done, this is a, this does have all black cabling to it, but it is a non-modular power supply, so all the cables can't be removed, which is all right because our case has got that basement that has all them cables that you don't need. I'm gonna take all these cables and just kind of shove them back in here for right now, like so. Slide the power supply up in. And you're gonna tighten down the thumb screws. Now uh, you can either just do these thumb tight or you can use a screwdriver either way. But, you know, thumb tight's going to be plenty for it. You really don't need them as tight as what they came from the factory. And there we go. Out of all the cables that's included with this, you will need the 24 pin main motherboard connector cable. You will need that one. We will need a PCI Express cable. That's for the graphics cord. We will need one of those, which it's only got one, because it is only a 500 watt power supply. And you will also need the 8-pin CPU connector here. Now, both of these is 8-pin connector, but you can tell them apart because the CPU is two 4-pin connectors. Well, the PCI Express is a 6 plus 2. You have two that kind of goes together making an 8-pin. And the CPU is it's chunked out in four pins a piece instead of the six and two. That's how you can tell them two apart. We will be adding a SATA drive, so we will need one SATA cable. So we'll keep the SATA cable out. Which reminds me, we can we connected that back fan, but we never did connect the front fan. So let's get the cable out here now, and we'll take care of that while I'm thinking about it. That way I don't forget about it again. And it's just like the back fan. It is a three-pin connector instead of a four-pin, so it ain't PMW. It's considered a DC fan because there's only three three wires going into it. And right down here is the other chassis fan header on this motherboard. So that system fan, or the front fan, and just like you did the uh, back fan, it is keyed. So it will only fit in one way. And we'll take it and spin it around here. We'll line it up on the three pins it matches with with the key. And we'll slide it on. And that hooks up the front fan. This is the 4 plus 4 pins. That's the CPU. Then he's go up through this grommet. Just like so. And then this one here is the PCI Express. It's got the 6 plus 2 connector. We need to run that one down through this one. And then you have the big massive 24 pin. Which we know needs to go up through this hole up here. Okay, like I said, that's the SATA cable for the SSD, so we can just kind of leave that lay here for right now. Um, here's your 4 pin, 24 pin. It's the four, 20 pin plus the 4 pin. You got a little clip right here on the edge of it. And uh, where it plugs into on the motherboard, it also has a little clip on it. You can only plug them in one way. I mean, you can plug them in backwards, but it's very hard to do. It is possible, but just make sure you line up them clips. Spin it around there. Once you get it started, push it in until she clicks. And once she clicks, she's in there pretty good. All right, let's jump up here to the 8-pin connector for the CPU. It's pretty well the same thing as a 4-pin. You got a connector right here on the edge of the connector. And there's a connector on the edge of the connector itself spin them around line them up and push it on there we go push them into the click now for your two and a half inch drives like we have here solid state drive you can either put it on this plate back here or you can put it in one of these drive bays down here at the bottom whichever you prefer they are gonna have to take this plate off pull it out here you need to make a choice here where you want to put it if you want to put it in the middle you want to put it there to the right if you want to put it to the left wherever you want to put it 
Since we're only going to be using one, I think I'm going to put mine right here in the middle. I'm going to make sure the connectors for it is facing downwards. There's the connectors for the solid state drive. I'm going to make sure them's facing down. Flip it over here, line up the holes on the back. Just like so. And you put the four screws in it. And just like everything else that I do, I just get these stored. I want to tighten it down all the way until I get the rest of them stored. There we go. Get this one stored. Get this one stored in here. And since that's the fourth one, we're going to go ahead and tighten this one down. Because the other three are already stored. And we're just going to go back around and snug these down. And again, you don't need these real tight. You ain't sealing against water or nothing or air. You just want to make sure they're snug. Enough to hold the product together, you know. Alright, now with all four of those put in, you put the little, little wings or the little bit metal pieces back over there. Put it, slide it back in. And again, this you ain't sealing against water or not, so thumb tight will be enough for this. There ain't, there ain't gonna be no much weight on that with just the one hard drive on it. And when it comes to the SATA drives, they only plug in one way. They are L-shaped. Only plug in one way. And when you have a chain like this, it's got three or four different connectors on it. You can use any of them. Um, just what you think makes the cable management look the best and the easiest for you to cable manage. I think I'm going to use the middle one here. And right here is the L bracket for the SATA power. There's also an L bracket over here, but it's a lot smaller. That's for your data cable. Make sure your L bracket's lined up right. Because that L, you can only plug them in one way. You slide the cable up on there. There we go. That one's plugged up on. And just like the power cable, it's got an L bracket. It only plugs in one way. Go around over here. And there's an L bracket right there on the connector itself. Line it up, push it up in there until the metal clip. That one there actually got a metal clip that clicks into place and you know it's in there securely. Alright guys, and here's the Gigabyte Windforce OC edition of the 5600 XT that's going to be going in the system. Um, the number one thing would be to do is to set down in here see which two back slots you need to take out. The expansion slot covers. And you see which two you need to take out, which would be the second and third one. So we'll go ahead and pull them out. Okay, there's the expansion slot covers removed. You gotta make sure your little clip back here on the back is in the open position. Make sure you got your gold gold contacts uncovered here. Make sure you take the safety, the little plastic thing off of them. Line it up in your slot. And you push it down in. And you hear a nice satisfying click from that clip coming up. Alright, once you get it clipped in there, and you get that nice satisfying clip from that coming up, you put your two tension screws in that came out of your uh, express, the express covers in the back. You make sure you screw it down to the case. And just like everything else, I can get one and get it stored. Then I take the second one and get it stored. Since I've already got the other one stored, I'm going to go ahead and tighten this one down all the way. Okay, then we're going to go down here, finish tightening this one up. And the last thing we got to do is connect the 8-pin connector here. You pull through the cable. You notice you got two connectors on this one cable. You can either use this one, this 8-pin, which is a 6 plus 2, or you can use this 6 plus 2. Um, either one you feel comfortable, whichever way you think makes it look the best. I think in this situation, I'm going to use the second one back. Take and hold the two pins together. And just like the 24 pin and your 8 pin on your motherboard, it's got a clip on it. It's got a clip on the connector on the graphics cord. You line them up, just like so, and you push them on. And you'll hear that little clip go down, that way you know they're on there. Um, let me get a monitor and a power cord, cord hooked up, and we'll get a boot test going. Alright all, now since I got it hooked up to the monitor here, we should see something about entering the BIOS or something like that, or we may see uh, 
non-bootable device found or something in that line. Let's hit the power button and see what happens. A little bit of lights on the motherboard's coming on. CPU fan spinning. The front and back fan spinning. That's a good sign. HDMI. That's a good sign. ASUS in the search server and possibility. And there we go. Because I don't have a keyboard or mouse plugged in, I'm getting this error code. But it is a functional system. Alright guys, that's how you build a $900 all AMD gaming computer here in 2020. I think with that 6 core 12 thread processor at 5600 XT and 16 gigs of RAM, this would be a wonderful little system for 1080p, 1440p gaming, depending on the titles you play and what kind of resolution you want to run them at. And it'd also be great for streaming if you want to get into streaming. I think these components would be more than enough for a gaming and streaming box all in one. I don't think you could go wrong with this. I think it's quite a good pairing. As far as the case goes, it has quite a bit of room in the back of it for your cable management. It has quite a few cutouts and grommets for your Passing your cables through to the front of your motherboard. The basement is nice if you have a non-module power supply like I used in this build. Now you can tuck away all them cables and whatnot. It seems to be a pretty sturdy case. The one concern I have is if you want RGB or ARGB or LEDs in your system. It does have a pretty dark side panel on it, which may be a concern. For the money, I think it's a pretty good case. If you'd like to build a system like this, if you'd like to have this kind of performance, but you don't quite have $900, there's ways you could save. You know, the case is almost $100. You can put it in a $40, $50 case because these components ain't going to be building up a whole lot of heat. So you can get away with a cheaper case, $40, $50. Bucks. I'll save you $40 or $50, $60 on the, on the case. The motherboard, the B550s now, you can get some models for less than $100 if you want to go to the B550 chipset. So that would save you another $40, $50, $60. Bucks, you know, so right there off the bat, you're looking at $750, $800 to build you a system like this. That's just some ideas on how you could cut down the price and you want this kind of performance. Now, I don't have no benchmarks in this video. I haven't got to got around to doing the benchmarking on this system, which I plan on doing. I also want to try to put some LEDs or RGB or ARGB lights in this case, see how they shine through that side panel. So that's some, uh, some ideas of videos coming up here on the channel. If you like this kind of content, go down and hit that like button. If not, hit that dislike button. There's that comment section below. I'll go through them every weekend on my live show here Saturday, uh, Saturday morning, 11 o'clock Eastern Standard Time here in the U.S. Don't forget that lonely little subscribe button and notification bell if you want to see them be notified when the next videos come out on this system. Also, I'm on Instagram and Twitter. If you like to come over there and follow me, I won't kill your inbox, but I do put out photos of new products I got coming in. That way you have an idea of what to expect here on the channel. Also, that's where I put out the, uh, when I'm going live on my live stream or if I got cancer for some reason, that's where you get them notifications. And with all that being said, you all have a good day and I'll see you in the next video or live stream.